Try to keep things simple as you meditate. Pare everything down to very simple steps. You're going to stay with your breath. The mind wanders off, bring it back. Wanders off again, bring it back again. Make the breath comfortable. See if making the breath comfortable makes it easier to stay. This is all pretty basic stuff, but there's a lot there. When the mind wanders off, when you're, when you're bringing it back, all the factors that depend on core rise are in there if you want to look for them. And when, when the mind is with the breath and all the sankharas, bodily fabrication, verbal fabrication, mental fabrication, they're all right here. So everything you really need to know is happening right here. It's simply a matter of looking very carefully. And it's easier to look when you keep things simple. The more you clutter, clutter up your meditation with other ideas, the less you can see. We talked the other day about respect for concentration. This is a very important principle, because it means sticking with the mind when it's very quiet, having a sense of the importance of that quietness, that stillness, so that you don't throw it away easily. And particularly, you'll find the things that come on strong, the opinions that are bound up with greed, anger, and delusion, or passion, aversion, and delusion. These things have a tendency to push things out of their way. And one of the first things to get stomped on is any state of stillness in the mind. We think it's stupid. What can you possibly learn by being still? But the problem is those, those opinions based on greed, anger, and delusion, those are, that's the ignorance. And the actual knowledge, the awareness, is that very simple awareness that stays with the breath. That's what you want to expand on. So you have to protect that. You have to value it. You have to see its importance. Sometimes we get complacent about it, and the mind tends to settle down. And the next time you sit, it settles down again and settles down again. You begin to think that you've got it mastered. And you start getting lazy. You start getting complacent. You don't look very carefully at what you're doing. And it may last for a while, but there'll come, there'll come a point where things start to unravel. And many times once they've unraveled, it's very hard to weave them back together again. So as the Buddha says, be heedful. Have a sense of respect for your concentration. That leads to having a respect for everything that surrounds the concentration. Looking into what keeps the mind steady, what keeps the mind stable. I'm trying to get really, really good at it, because the more precise you are in seeing what's going on, or in looking after what's going on, the more precisely you'll see other things. So keep things simple. Your awareness, the breath, being mindful of the breath, being alert to the breath. As John Lee says, everything comes out of this, even knowledge and vision of release. He says the knowledge is a strength and form of mindfulness. The vision is a strength and form of alertness. These two qualities that start everything. In the basic Dharma textbook that's used to teach monks and novices in Thailand, it's made out of lists, starting with lists of twos, lists of threes, fours, fives. And the very first list in the list of twos is two qualities that are very helpful, mindfulness and alertness. The very basic. And yet what we're doing is taking these basic qualities and developing them till they turn into something that's transcendent, that helps us see the transcendent. Or as John Lee once said, everything, where did the Buddha gain awakening? Right at the tip of his nose. It's all right here. It's simply we haven't sorted things out clearly enough. We haven't looked carefully enough. So this is one of the aspects of concentration practice, is teaching you to look very, very carefully, not to slough over any of the details. Sometimes you find in meditation that anger arises. It seems to anger arise more easily after the mind has been concentrated some time. You find yourself getting upset over what this person does, what that person does, because it's not quite right. Well, realize it's because you're not looking carefully enough at your own meditation. You begin to take things for granted. Keep looking back. Okay, what are you doing that's not as careful as it should be, careful as it could be? 
not as precise as it could be. Have you really looked into the breath? Is it really as comfortable as you can make it? As John Fuang once said, you have to be crazy about the meditation. You have to be crazy about the concentration for it to really work, for you to get really good at it. It has to be the sort of thing you want to do in every spare moment. It has to capture your imagination. So you try to find ways of keeping the mind still in all kinds of unusual circumstances, when you're at work, when you're driving, every aspect of life. See if you can keep the mind centered, no matter what you do, no matter what's going on around you. Make it your sport. When you can do this, you've got all the basis for success right there. It's something you like to do, because it captures your imagination. You stick with it. You try to find ways of keeping the mind centered in all circumstances. That's persistence. Attentiveness or intentness. Looking very, very carefully at what you're doing, not sloughing over the details. And then finally, powers of analysis. Checking up on how things are going. Have a very clear sense of what counts as skillful and what doesn't count as skillful. Work on these things. Keep it basic. Stay with the basis of success. Then you find that the practice goes a lot more smoothly. And the results come a lot more quickly, and at the same time, they're more solid. It's when we let things get abstract, when we start dealing in theories that complicate matters, that's when we don't see. It's like, it's like sm smoke. As a John, John Lee has that nice image of a person who's building a fire and creating a lot of smoke. He thinks, well, there's light in the fire, but it's actually it's creating more smoke than light. What you want is your awareness to be a clean, burning flame. And that's best when you keep things simple, keep things right at their basics. The breath, your awareness right here in the present moment, your intention to stay here. When you keep it basic, when you keep it simple, down to earth like this, everything becomes very clear. <laughs>